Lord Jesus, you are too faithful to disappoint. You prove it yourself in my life. Now I've come to realize you are too faithful to fail me. Faithful to fail me. You are too faithful to fail me. Lord Jesus, you are too faithful to disappoint. You're proving yourself in my life. Now I want to be alive. You're too faithful to help me. Come on, worship the Lord. He's too faithful. You're too faithful to help me. Lord Jesus. You're Responsibilities. And the moment 
we fail in this responsibility, you will see that such a person will not amount to much in life. Discover to recover. A very beautiful story that Jesus told himself in the book of Luke chapter 15. The story of a man that attacked the prodigal son. The prodigal son. A very strong story and very laudable story. And we know the story of the prodigal son, how he sought that the father should give him half of the kingdom that be built on him and, and the father gave it to him and he went into town and he squandered the entire money and uh, he lived a righteous life according to the scripture and as he was there he finished his money he now entered into serious famine he entered into want and there was no place for him again to walk except walking in the poetry of peace and it was an abomination for Jews to walk, to even touch pigs, swine. That was how the, the how deplorable that young man's position and condition was. A Jew that pigs were sacrilege to. Now he was the one that was feeding the pig. He was feeding the pigs. He was the one taking charge of the pigs. And they started eating the food of pigs. It was a pathetic situation. But something happened very important today that has to do with discover to recover. One day, the word of God says, Look of that same book of Luke chapter 15, verse 17. Look at what God says. Luke 15, verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my father's? Have bread enough and to spare. I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great far off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran. And fell on his neck and kissed him. Praise God. He was eating the food of swine. And what of God said, he came to himself. The turning point of everyone's life is to come to him or herself. The prodigal son turning point came the day he came to himself. You must discover before you recover. He came to himself. All this while, you know, if you check in James Version, it's an old English. When Peter was addressing Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ was talking about his death, he said, You are beside yourself. In the Jewish language, they say, You are beside yourself. That means you are mad. So the prodigal son was beside himself before now. And one of God said, He came to himself. It was not until he came to himself that he realized that the father's servants were feeding well. They were well, they were eating and they were having spread and, and were having seconds. He said, but oh, here am I, suffering of hunger. And when God said he came to himself and he decided against his situation and said, I will arise and go and see my father. I'm not going to my father to look for him to tell him that you are my father and your son. I'm not going on the status of being a son. I'm going on the status of being an employee. I want him to employ me. I know he can pay me better than this. My life will be better off with my father than staying here and taking care of the pigs. He discovered. I want to go say he arose and went. As he was still away of. A notice came to the father that your son is coming back, and the father ran, met him, and held him and hugged him with the dirty clothes of pigs, smelling pig, pig. And when he told the father, I'm not coming again as your son, I'm just coming as a father, I said, Shut up, you are still my son. He discovered, 
And the father ordered that they should go and kill the father's cow and make merry. He took him, he went and took his bed, he took him to a boutique, he bought new clothes for him, he changed his wardrobe, he brought him, he called for party and said, Come, my son that I thought that was lost has come back. Come and celebrate with me. The prodigal son recovered. Why? He first of all discovered. Your recovery is in your discovery. That situation you are in, you need to discover first. That you need to upgrade yourself. That this is not the level at which you are. The discovery will give you the energy, the spiritual energy to get to this, to recover from whatsoever thing you are expecting. Praise God. I see somebody recovering today in the name of Jesus. I see somebody recovering today in the name of Jesus. And I say, no matter how far you have traveled in error, don't feel ashamed to turn back onto the right path. No matter how far you have traveled in error, the prodigal son was there for years in error. When he discovered he did not look at the years that he has wasted. So people will tell you that, okay, I've made a mistake, but let me continue with the mistake. It's never late to do the right thing. It is never late to turn around and do the right thing. If there's any mistake you have made in life, don't remain in the mistake. It is never late. Somebody would have told him that he would do that until he took his time. Why did he take his step? He discovered. And when he discovered, he recovered. I see you recovering today in the name of Jesus. A story again that changed generation in the word of God in the book of Esther. In the book of uh, Ruth, a Jewish woman, her name was Naomi. What of God said that Naomi was a wife to a man of Bethlehem. His name was Elimelech. Now, Elimelech married Naomi in the book of Ruth, chapter 1. And there was famine in the land. And they were moved by the situation. In life, don't move your life by situation. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the source of God. Not as many as are led by the situation. Ruth and the husband Elimelech were led by the situation in Israel. So they left Israel and they went to the land of Moab, Moabites. When they were in the Moab, they went to their two sons, Malon and Shalom. And when they went there, the two sons married from Moab. And what of God said, after 10 years of going there, Naomi lost the husband in the Melech. Naomi lost the first son. Shalom and Amelon, two of them we are lost. The two sons were lost. Where she went for greener pasture, she ended up losing all she had. Why? She went outside the direction of God. But that's not where I'm going today. One day, this woman called Naomi started making inquiry in the spirit. It takes spiritual inquiry for you to discover. Praise the Lord. It takes personal spiritual inquiry for you to discover before talking about recovery. Because that is when you start evaluating your life, appraising what is happening in your life. You start now making spiritual inquisition. It's only those that ask questions that can receive answers. When you begin to ask for spiritual questions and you begin to interact with the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to give you direction towards your life. That was exactly what happened to Naomi. And the word of God says in the book of Ruth, chapter 1, verse 6. Then she arose with her daughters in law that she might return from the country of Moab. For she had heard in the country of Moab. How that the Lord had visited his people in giving them bread. She arose. 
She evaluated the economy of where she ran out from, from her hometown. Evaluated it from where she went to sojourn. And she now found out that she would be better off at home. She discovered that and she did not sit down to manage the situation. She told the daughters in law, I'm going home. My place is better than where I am now. I'm going back home. I know the story as she went home. That journey was what praised about the birth of Jesus Christ. Because when she went home, Ruth now married Boaz. Boaz now gave birth to Obed. Obed gave birth to Jesse. Jesse to David. And Jesus Christ came from the tribe of David. Now, that journey alone that she did discovered, she went home and she recovered up. Today, if you are reading the genealogy of Jesus Christ, you cannot throw away Naomi. Why? She discovered. And she recovered. Everywhere you have been in confusion today, I command your eyes to be open to discover. And I command and say, let there be recovery in the name of Jesus. Nobody has ever discovered without recovery. It's not possible. And like I said, it is never late to do the right thing. You see, that's the problem with black man and white man. Look at what happens. If a black man is leaving this Lagos and suppose that he's going to other child. So instead of going through Ogun, they go, he now wrongly enter seven. And instead of going, he is on his way to Anisha. Now he has found himself in Kodovua. He has passed by Togo, Ghana, Kodovua. And somebody now tells him, Mr. Man, you are in the wrong path. Where are you going to? He said, I'm going to Anisha. I said, ah, where you started, if you have gone, you must have gotten to where you are going. You need to get to Lagos before taking up. A black man will tell the person, listen, I have entered the wrong Hello, let me continue. But if he's a white man, even if he has gotten to Sierra Leone from there, gotten to Kuru, gotten to Liberia, gotten to Sierra Leone, he will still come back, come back to Lagos to start heading towards a dope in road. You can never get it right when you have started wrongly. It's not possible. There is need to come back to the right. If you meet some people and you are telling them about Jesus Christ, you need to be born again. Say, listen, the sin I've committed is so much, and I don't think God will forgive me. And in fact, I just, I just let me let me go on where I'm going. In fact, it's better that I stay. And such a person is heading into destruction. It's never too late to do the right thing. The young man in the Bible, his name was called Jabez. His case was pathetic because he did not cause any problem in his life. But the mother gave birth to him and gave birth and gave him a name, a name that was troubling him. The man was born an honorable man according to the scripture. The word of God said, Book of 1 Chronicles chapter 4. If you read verse 9 and 10, he said, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrows. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, with me, and thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it might grieve me, and it might not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Jabez discovered that his problem was from his name. That the mother gave him a wrong name, and the name was haunting him, and the name was sorrow. So Jabez, that's supposed to be the most vulnerable, was wallowing in sorrow. And one day Jabez woke up and said, No! He discovered, and now took up and took responsibility, and went to God and cried to God and said, God, I want you to enlarge my cause. I am most honorable, but I'm living dishonorably, dishonorably. Change my story. And what of course said, God did that because he has taken responsibility on his hand to do the right thing. 
Jabez will have died miserable in as much as he was the most honorable. But he became responsible and he saved his life from being miserable. I see you taking up responsibility today in the name of Jesus. A man they call Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, in the book of Mark chapter 10. He was at a place called Jericho, begging money. But Mews was there. We don't want to tell us how long he was blind. But he was there begging money. But something happened to this man one day. In verse 46, Mark chapter 10, verse 46. And they came to Jericho. And he went out of Jericho with his disciples. And a great number of people, blind but Mews, the son of the Mews, sat by the highway side begging and when he heard that it was jesus of nazareth he began to cry out and say jesus thou son of david have mercy on me praise god but news was not seen but he discovered when he was there he knew he could not use his eyes you know some people will tell you all the areas of their weakness but they will never measure in the area of their strength. But Mills was blinded on both eyes. He was not sitting down complaining about his blindness. He could hear. So while he was sitting at Jericho begging, he heard footsteps that was more than the normal footsteps he was hearing. He took advantage of his strength. He did not measure on his weakness being the sign. What is going on? I can hear crowd passing here. I can hear. I cannot see them, but I could hear them. And somebody told him, Jesus Christ of Nazareth is passing on your street. He said, That's the only news I need to discover. He discovered. And he began on his way to recover. He started shouting, Have mercy on me! Have mercy on me! And the people told him, Shut up. Don't talk again. If you talk, we're not going to give you money again. And one of God said, he shouted the more. He went to where they are renting public addresses. He rented more speaker. And he started shouting the more. Have mercy on me. And we're going to say, when he shouted, I said, that just too still. I see Jesus standing still on your behalf in Jesus' name. Concerning that situation, as you cry, Jesus will stand still for you in the name of Jesus. When he's too still, cry, we are looking at you. Why are you standing still? He said, somebody called me that I needed to attend to. Go and bring that blind man. And the same people that told him, shut up. They are the same people that went there and told him, you are very fortunate, you are lucky. He's calling you. And they threw away the, 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 the clothes he was using to beg money, knowing fully that he was not coming back to beg money again. And the moment he came to Jesus, he knew what he wanted. And as soon as Jesus asked him, what do you want? You want me to buy the latest car in town for you? You need house in Banana Island. He said, I don't need any of these things. All I need is that I might receive my sight. Most of the times, when we go into prayer, we don't know what to ask for. Some people go into prayer confused. This man knew what he wanted. And so as soon as Jesus asked him, what do you want? He said, that I might receive my sight. And he said, now, receive that sight. That faith has made you whole. As a result of sticking and not giving up concerning your situation. I prophesy over your life. Concerning that situation in your life today, Jesus will stand still and he will solve that problem in the name of Jesus. That was how Black Black News joined the crowd and began to shout to Sana. The man that was taken as a disabled now became an instrument in the hand of God. God is changing your story in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now this scripture we are reading now, David discovered something. David said, listen, I was blaming God before concerning my situation. I was blaming God that God is supposed to do something better for me because other people are succeeding. I saw the people that are very, that are sinners and they are succeeding. Just like what we did in Sunday school today. He said, I was so foolish later when I entered to the house of God and now we discovered what God plans that God has for those people. Let's read it as we are closing this sermon this morning. Book of Psalm 73, verse 1. It's a long scripture, but I'm going to read it and just take cognizance because we don't need much explanation and that we have to be self explanatory. 
As we are reading this morning, I pray that God will change somebody's life in the name of Jesus. Now I read 73. From verse 1, I will get to 22. Truly, God is good to Israel, even to such as are of clean heart. But as for me, my feet, we are almost gone. My step had well nigh slipped. For I was envious and the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bounds in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men. Neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore, pride compassed them about as a chain, violence covering them as a garment. Their eyes turn out with fatness that have more than heart to wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lovely. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walking through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither, and waters of full cup are wrong out of them. And they say, How the God know? And they have no knowledge in the mouth most high. Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I, I, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all the day long have I been plagued and tested every morning. For I say, I will speak thus, behold, I shall offend against the generation of Nigeria. When I thought to know this, I was too, it was too painful to me until I went to the sanctuary of God. Then I understood at their end. Surely thou set them in the slippery places. Thou casted them down into destruction. How are they brought down in this in the, in the, in the solution? As in the moment, they are utterly consumed with terror. As a dream, when as I wake, and the Lord, when thou awakest them, thou shalt, shalt despise their image. Thus my heart was grieved, and I was pricked in my reins. So foolish was I, and ignorant I was as a beast. For the praise God. David discovered that there is nothing that an unbeliever has that is envious of. He said before he was envious of them, that they don't have any problem, they are having money, the things are working for them, and things are growing for them, and he was jealous of them. He said, until he entered the sanctuary, until he now became a child of God, he now discovered that God has set all these people in a slippery place. Look and see them when you turn back, you will not see them again. Everything about them has scattered. They don't last. He said that was when he knew that he was foolish. That he should be praising God as a child of God. He discovered that he was better off as a child of God than an unbeliever. He respects for what they have, that they are placed on a slippery ground. He discovered and he recovered. That was why they call him a man after God's own heart. Because he discovered that, listen, in God alone, in the word of God, he said in the book of, I think, book of Psalm 100, he said, listen, there was a place they talk about that he would rather be a dog, a gatekeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Then he said, I would rather be a, a I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of God than to dwell in the palace of the wicked. That's the man that understood God so much. See, there is nothing that an unbeliever has that will make him to be envious of him because he is set up on a slippery ground and before he know it, he is no more there because he has fallen away. Praise the Lord. Now, as I want to close this morning, I want to say something very important as I close. How do we begin the journey of discovery? It's very important. Somebody may be asking the question of, okay, how do we even start discovering? Let me give you a clue. Every day that you finish your work, every day, especially in the evening or night, before you sleep, take your time. Stay all alone for 10 minutes at least. 10 minutes. Every day, have 10 minutes of your personal life. In that place is where you ask yourself, how was today? You will tell yourself the truth, how the day ended up. That is where you will know the mistakes you have done in the day. How you succeeded that day. What you did that was wrong, that would have been better if you had done the right thing. The right things you have done, that is supposed to improve on the next day. At least 10 minutes. 
In my family, they know me. At that point in time, I will tell you, if my children enter, I tell them, go, I'm thinking, I'm just going to go, leave me alone. You must be alone most times in life to think your life. You see, you wake up, you also you come back, you are in the midst, you talk and talk and you sleep talking, you, you have bad dream talking, everything is just you are too noisy for God to speak to you. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 1 says, Through desire, a man having separated himself, seeketh an intermeddle with all wisdom. Learn to separate yourself at least 10 minutes in a day. The moment you do that, every day you evaluate the day, you appraise the day on how to approach the next day. The error of yesterday can still be corrected. The error you made yesterday cannot be corrected again. But you can still improve on the error today when you understand that you made the error yesterday. So before you can discover and make progress in your life, you must have time out for yourself to ask yourself some certain questions that nobody will have courage to ask you. And make amends on how to manage your life better. That is how we begin to discover. That was all brought about the prodigal son coming to himself. He came to himself. He was all alone. Before Jacob encountered the, the angel, and his name was changed from Jacob to, to, to Israel. He was alone. He was left alone. Daniel said that before he got the encounter, when he was praying, praying in Sheba, before he got the encounter in the river Sheba, he was alone. You need to be alone every day and make some discovery on how to improve your life. It is because of that being alone that you discover the how the strategy of the next day. So that you won't have a better yesterday. Every day will be a plus. Every day in your life will be a plus. Because we are improving on error of yesterday. Every day. That is how to discover. And when you discover, the next thing that will happen is that you will recover. Let's do that fix. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now we go first Chronicles chapter, chapter 4, verse. Then I tell I talk about Jabez. Say Jabez, cry! I want you to cry this day. That was how they got it. Cry concerning that situation and say, God. I need you to recover concerning that situation. I cry unto you today for a change of status in the mighty name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Liba shaka ba sotra ba ligiri bos. Liya tata tata ba sotra ba sotra ba bos sotra bos. Kabo sotra la. Kaliya tata ba sotra ba sotra ba sotra ba sotra. Kando skemo sila. Kaliya la ba sotra ba sotra ba sotra ba Oh God, I call for recovery this morning. Maliga tata sotra ba. In Jesus Christ's most powerful name, we are praying. Amen. Now, if you have not met with Christ, wherever you are, bow down your heads right now and begin to confess your sins and ask Jesus to come to your life and become your personal and savior this morning. Ask God to forgive your sins. Thank you, Jesus. Confess those sins. Jesus is hearing you. Thank you unto God for your name. Be the search of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now say this prayer of, of faith after me. If you want Jesus in your life, say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me at the cross of Calvary. On the third day you rose again. Remind, be justified. Thank you for saving me from my sins and Satan to serve the living God. Today I believe I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, your grace has brought these wounds. Let the same of your grace preserve them in the name of Jesus. That the day you will come, they shall not be found wanting, but be shouting of Zelda to the highest in the name of Jesus, covering every life that we given to you this morning with the blood of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' most powerful name we pray. Amen. And I prophesy unto you in the name of Jesus Christ that every power that is holding you from this country to recover this morning, I come against them in the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
you will discover to recover. In Jesus Christ, we will spare from them. We pray. Amen. Amen. Lord bless you. Sit down briefly as we pray.